So I get pulled over a lot. Um, I make wide right turns because I have a giant vehicle. If it doesn't say no left on red, I make a left on red. Some police will pull me over and say, hey, you can't do that or that or this. And um, for years I've gotten lots of tickets. Uh, you know, I didn't know my rights. Uh, I was paying, you know, a lot of money in extortion constantly. I, I love the video, When Should You Shoot a Cop? I think it's a great video. The real important part in there is finding that, that delicate line between uh, the non-tyrannical cop who maybe you just have to educate a little bit and says, have a nice day, and the super tyrannical cop who I'm sitting here for four hours explaining and they still end up tear gassing me and breaking my window and breaking my door and pulling me out and putting a gun to my head. I could have been any one of the dead people that you see are innocent, unarmed people that are just shot and killed, no reason whatsoever. When I started watching videos on the internet about like how to not get pulled over, and know your rights, I'm like, I have rights? I thought this was a privilege. There's a lot more intimidation when you're in a lower car and, the, and they're right here and they can see everything and they're looking right in. And uh, it, it is there is an advantage to having this RV, I'll, I'll admit that. Um, with that being said, I like to make sure that when I'm pulled over, I don't want to have the interaction right this close to them. So when I get pulled over, I basically make sure my windows are shut in the front and there's no doors up here, so I do have an advantage again where they don't have to open my doors. But then I drop this and then there from the front to the back, they can't see in. And I just open up the window and sometimes a screen and I'll, you know, talk to the officer this way. How can I help you, officer? And it, I mean, it's, it's a long way down there. I mean, you, you can clearly see over the top of your car. In the driver's seat, I'll probably start recording. When I come back here, I clip that on there. I've actually uh, notched out a section so my camera in my phone isn't blocked by the, uh, the case. Uh, I would then went ahead and put in a permanent power supply so that no matter what, I can always just, you know, as soon as I pop this in, I, I uh, plug the phone in and it's always going to be charging a way to just maybe switch their mind in the beginning to think are they more constitutionally aware are they more worried about my rights like are we both willing to get home safely today officer I think would be a great question to open with and of course they're gonna ask me license registration insurance or me to step out and uh, you know of course what I used to was oh sure I'll still I don't know my rights and I get out and they cuff me and I get all kinds of tickets and <clears throat> thousands of dollars so after learning my lesson I don't step out anymore I, uh, I say I'm sorry, I'm, I'm unable to step out because I'm fearful that you might you know, beat me up, throw me to the ground, tase me. Well, there's the Fifth Amendment, and uh, it states you're really not allowed to incriminate. It's almost like against the law for you to pretty much incriminate yourself. You could very easily just ask the police officer, Officer, uh, if I hand you my license, registration, and insurance, and one of them happens to be expired, are you going to use that against me in a court of law? It's a very simple question, yes or no, and the cops will say, well, if you, yeah, if one of them's expired or suspended, then yes, we're going to write you a ticket, and yes, I will be using it against the court of law. Well, then your answer should be, I'm sorry, officer, I'm not allowed to provide that documentation because I'm not allowed to incriminate myself, uh, but there is a license plate on the back, which I think maybe helps you. They ran my name, knew I didn't kill nobody, and I'm not a wanted felon. So there's really no reason to detain me. I haven't done anything wrong. There's no victim, there's no crime. And then they're like, well, uh, off your plate, we've got your name, so I'm gonna write you down for this. My next answer is, I don't sign documents of extortion. If I could just maintain this, you know, uh, thing where I'm not providing them with documentation, then there really is no way for them to cite me. I usually get them either riled up to the point where they're like, you're gonna have to sign this, or we're gonna, you're gonna get arrested, and I'm like, well, you're not allowed to kidnap me either. And usually that'll backtrack them. But recently I did run into this one instance where I do everything you see, same kind of situation. And the officers um, decided that, you know, the Constitution really doesn't matter. And uh, your rights really don't matter. My rights really don't matter. On January 6, 2014, David C. Hutchinson, an employee of the Paradise Valley Police Outfit, claimed he clocked an RV going 55 miles per hour faster than the 40 miles per hour that some others had dictated. Hutchinson activated his emergency lights and the RV driven by Zane Kane stopped. The time was about 8.04 p.m. Within minutes, Hutchinson, badge number 167, was joined by colleagues Joe DeVenti, badge 173, 
and Carney, badge 169. 15 minutes later, their colleague Clement, badge 174, arrived. I did actually call 911 a few times. The officers outside said, look, I'm on the phone with 911. Um, I need to be let go. Are you guys holding me hostage because you haven't given me any charges? Am I free to go? No, they say, I'm not free to go. What charges do I have? Uh, no answer. So then, if you don't have an answer, you're holding me hostage. And the police officer actually says, yes, we're holding you hostage. And I'm like, what the? That they're holding me hostage. With no charges, no problem. They're parked on the vehicle. They won't let me go. They run me off the road. My life, ma'am. Zane's freedom of movement had been prevented. Carney had parked his vehicle in front of the RV, and Hutchinson had parked his vehicle in the rear of the RV. So I then call back 911 and be like, they're admitted they're holding me hostage. And she's like, well, I'll talk to the officers outside. I don't have time for this. You guys don't have all day, you're getting paid overtime, whatever. I need to go. My individual rights and what I need outweighs what these cops need. I'm being held hostage, how should I feel? Whatever he's gonna say, she just regurgitated to me and said, don't worry about it. It's almost like that movie where, don't worry, mate, you'll be dead soon if you get out of this alive. They're just, they're power hungry. They're out here on steroids and donuts. Nowhere in the reports filed by those men was a claim that Zane was hostile or threatening. Quite the opposite, in fact. DeVenti wrote that Zane had verbalized that he felt like it was a hostage situation. Carney indicated that Zane had stated that he was being stopped unlawfully by the police. Hutchinson pinned that Zane communicated that he was traveling, not driving, and that as there was no victim, there was no crime. Clement acknowledged that Zane had said he was afraid to come out because we, the police, were going to beat him. You guys need to let me go. You already know who I am. Okay. So that part's done. Now let me go. I have no warrants. Have a nice day. A vehicle on the road. I am traveling. Okay. There's a big He's difference. Traveling. I'm not breaking any laws. There's no victim. There's no crime. At 10 p.m., Hutchinson, who had briefly left the scene to meet with John Arun, a municipal court judge, returned with a search warrant. They actually threw a uh, a uh, a door pry bar through my window here, which now I put it in a bulletproof window into this thing. So that's not going to happen again through that window. But uh, they did throw it through the window and it came all the way over here and actually made two holes in my wall right here. Yeah, it's like the pry end of it. Clement, in his report, noted that Carney used a Halligan tool to put a hole in the back window, which fell inside the vehicle. Does a tool that fell fly across the back room and put gouges on the opposing wall? And then they literally just started um, literally kicking and punching like everywhere. Uh, in my RV, just all over. A little while after that, they, uh, you know, uh, threw in a tear gas container. They gave me a warning. Hey, if you don't come out, we're gonna throw tear gas in. You guys, I am not violent. You have no reason to shoot the gas in here. I am not a violent person. You guys are not violent. Stop it and go away. I'm like, oh, I know there's tear gas coming. So I went into my bathroom and filled my bathroom sink here in the RV with water. You're a terrorist. Come out now. You don't have a warrant! Have a Window! Show me the warrant! Look at it. Hey. It says we're coming in the RV to get Where does it say that? Five page document. Come out right, and it's from Paradise Valley. We're throwing gas. That's what? biased! Uh, I was in the front and they threw the tear gas in. I had a wet towel over my face because they had already told me they were going to tear gas me. And I was able to pick up the tear gas and it was just spewing out, man, everywhere. Shh. I put it right into the sink. Shh. Puts it right out. Right out like a candle. I put on my bathroom exhaust fan and all the tear gas just starts getting sucked up and uh, at this point it just didn't matter they're just they're gonna come in and get me they're prying the door open you know at some point you either kill the cop or you have to kind of give up and I, I didn't want to give up but I, I knew that my one gun against four cops isn't gonna isn't gonna do it seriously everybody back off one guy no. put cuffs on me peacefully out, i'm a peaceful this guy this is over now you're coming out or we're i gonna... am there is please no peacefully can you guys just back up can you guys wow. just back are you coming yes okay, then can you pe now. i know but there's too many of you guys and you're gonna have to hurt me and in the fear of me giving up that i can still give up i can still be handcuffed i can still be peaceful i can still be killed i'm coming here i come here i come i'm going out i gotta go out i gotta go out when Zane exited, DeVenti noted that he pointed my pistol at Kane as he exited the RV. Carney put handcuffs on Zane, and he was taken to the Paradise Valley Police Outfit headquarters, while his colleagues entered, searched, and stole some of Zane's property.
And it's amazing that the, the tyrannical police, when they decide to, can break your window, uh, smash tear gas, take all of your possessions, throw all of your stuff on the ground, and get away with it. At most, Zane traveled at a speed faster than others said was permissible. And also when I go to the police station uh, to get my marijuana back, uh, I just have like these cops around, you know, they stand and they get around you and stuff. And if you give them power, like, and you'd be scared of them, I think that they, they, they thrive on that. And if you're just like, oh, you guys are trying to intimidate me? Nice try. <laughs> I think it kind of loses the power, or they might punch you in the face. I don't know, you know, it, it could go either way, but from what I've seen, uh, well, next time I turned around after laughing at them, they're gone, because it didn't intimidate me. Let me go ahead and weigh this up here, make sure we're at the right, oh my god, what? <sighs> That's what came in from the lab. We're going to start missing a bunch. Do not call me for it. Thank you, officers, for my dabs back, which are mine, and you weren't supposed to take in the first place, which is why I'm leaving the building with them. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to head out to my vehicle over here, which is the massage mobile. Zane was targeted solely because he didn't comply with those wearing badges. Zane didn't cause a victim. Carney, Clement, DeVinti, and Hutchinson did. And that, despite their oath, to protect the rights of all persons, to be free from criminal attack, to be secure in their possessions, and to live in peace. When common sense and justice is allowed to be superseded by a badge and double standards, the rights of all are in jeopardy. Zane is now threatened with legalese entitled, failure to provide ID, reckless driving, failure to stop for a police officer, exceeding posted speed limit. In total, between impound fees for his RV, lost work, and ransoms paid, the incident has cost him $3,500.